Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Hey guys, welcome back to Titanium Man Garage, and today I'm doing something different. Um, I'm doing a Polaris Sportsman 700. And I already got uh, things started to take apart, and uh, this video isn't only for you, it's for me as well, just so I remember how to put everything back together. I did one 700, replaced the motor in it, uh, it's been like three years. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna film this so I don't forget anything, but I got the plastics off, took the tank off, air box and carb, I put the carb in a plastic bag. I ended up removing it from the, uh, up on top from the throttle thumb lever, that way I can keep everything intact. So on uh, the 700s, you've got the pulse pump for the carb, goes right into there, it runs off vacuum off the engine, and then you also got a breather going to the air box. So my next step is I'm gonna get that hose out of the way, pull the spark plugs, get that out of the way, Get the hoses, uh, disconnect the exhaust. What happened with this one, it's, it's got 500 miles on it. The head gasket blew, so it's uh, actually blown coolant out of the Y pipe here. So you can see how hot that Y pipe is. I don't know if you can see it in the camera here. Whoops, I'm trying to get a good shot. There you go. So the Y pipe got hot and it actually warped and uh, coolant's blowing out of the, the exhaust. Uh, I did check the oil, there is no coolant in the oil, which is a good sign because usually the water pump seal on these uh, go bad, they leak, and then leak coolant into the crankcase and mess up the piston and the crank. So I'm hoping just to get away with uh, tearing the, the head off. I'll take a shot to see what that looks like. Hopefully the pistons are good and go from there. I'm hoping it's just a head gasket. I've got another 700 over here that I got torn apart, and it's the same deal. It overheated, the head's warped. The rest of the engine looks good. Oh, and the uh, water pump seal, as you can see, right here, it's all black. The water pump seal leaked on that one. So I'm gonna get on this, and I'm gonna videotape as I'm going along. That way you guys can see what I'm doing. And uh, once I get the head off, I got the head shaved, got the new gasket already, get that put back on and hopefully get this bad boy fired up today. All right, so I took the uh, rocker cover off and keep in mind those rocker covers are known to, to warp, they're plastic. So my next step is I'm gonna unbolt all the rockers, pull them all off and, and uh, the rods you wanna keep all in order. So keep the rockers with the rods so when you assemble them, you put them back. Uh, the exact same spot they were in. And then I'll pull the bolts off the head. I still gotta pull my exhaust and drain the coolant. I'm just working on the top first and then I'm gonna raise my lift and then work down. All right, so I got the head off. The cylinders look really clean, so I'm beginning to believe there is only 500 miles on here. I did label my rockers and my push rods and what order they are in. So this is the front of the engine, I got that right there. Try to keep my bolts the same, I wanna put those back in uh, in the same order they were in. And uh, I wanna show you something. So what I've noticed, I've got uh, both 700 engines torn apart. And it seems like what they like to do is on the exhaust, and this would be the exhaust ports coming out, they're very pitted. So if I were to put a head gasket on here and throw this back together, most likely it would leak around the coolant ports. Um, I've got the, the same issue on this one. This is the one sitting on the bench, the warped head. Now this one, this is uh, off a 600, and the casting number is the same. If I flip this over, there's a casting number right here. Last numbers are 036. Same number on, on here. So I'm going to cross reference the numbers, but I think those are the same heads. I mean, the, uh, the head off of 425 is the same 
for a 500. So I'm hoping between the six and the 700s they're better because aside from the valves on this one, <coughs> this one doesn't have all that pitting right there. So I might uh, end up using this head. I'm gonna make sure it's level first. And uh, if not, I'll uh, shave it down and install it. All right, so I'm about ready to uh, install the head and the head gasket. And I thought I'd show you the, uh, uh, the Polaris manual with the uh, cylinder head bolt uh, sequences. And uh, if you can read that, 35 plus or minus four foot pounds. And then after that, you let it sit for a minute. And then it's a, another quarter turn after that. So I got my uh, jug all cleaned up, ready to go. Make sure all your surfaces are clean. I've got my head ready to go. That's all cleaned up and I made sure it was level. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you oil the bolts and the washers. Make sure they're clean first before you do that. But upon installation, you want to use oil. Okay, so like the manual said, drip them in oil and there's a reason for this. That way they uh, seat good. Um, when you tighten these, you are kind of stretching the bolt. And uh, it also help cut into the, the jug while you're uh, tightening everything down. So I like to hand start them. And then I'll torque them down to 35 foot pounds. That one I'm going to have to move the engine over for. All right, here we go. One starting in the bottom middle. One. Top middle. Left bottom. And right top. And number five. Right bottom. Thirty-five foot pounds plus or minus four. Number six, left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mark on these bolts. Now that I have everything torqued on, just so I know where my quarter turn is. I do this on the uh, the 500s too because on the 500s it's the torque sequence is different too. It's a quarter turn and a quarter turn. So basically, right now I let it sit for a minute, let everything rest, relax, chill, and then I'm gonna give each one of those a quarter turn, and my head will be tight. Now here we go with my quarter turn. Start the same sequence. One. Two. down here at the bottom.
There we go. See, you got all my marks at a quarter turn. Now you want to take your push rods, dip them in oil, put them in the same sequence. Like you can see, I have all mine marked right here. So you want to dip both ends. And put those in. Make sure you line them up with the lifters. I'm going to go through that with all of them. Now when I put the rockers on, I'll torque them down to uh, 22 foot pounds. I think it's the same plus or minus four. So I got her all back together. She purrs like a kitten. It's not blowing any coolant. But as I'm going through the radiator and topping off the radiator, it overheats almost immediately and I get uh, coolant spitting out of the overflow tank. Um, so I'm going through the water pump and I just want to double check that that spun. Um, I could start it up for you to show you guys for a second, as long as you don't let it run too long. Yeah. Runs good. She spins. That's what I'm looking for. I just want to make sure it's pumping. Next thing I'm thinking is that radiator is probably plugged. Um, it's the only uh, other thing I could think of because I top it off. Let it run for about three to five minutes, and all of a sudden, temperature just shoots up and uh, coolant overflows from the top. So what I do is I, I like to burp the system. I leave the radiator cap off. I let it run. Got to get up the temperature. So the thermostat opens up. Um, the fact that it's uh, bubbling over even before the thermostat opens up tells me. Uh, there's something going on. My guess is with all them uh, fins in the radiator bent over, there's a good chance this radiator's plugged. Uh, I did hotwire the fan. I like to do that uh, when I'm burping the system. That way it cools down immediately. Uh, it's just something I like to do and then you're also testing the fan at the same point. It's either going to be the radiator or if that doesn't solve my problem, I'm gonna check that thermostat. So that's where I am right now. But other than that, she uh, purrs like a kitten and it's not blowing any coolant out of the exhaust like it was before. Here now I can actually show you that white pipe. So I put a different white pipe in that wasn't uh, cracked or warped. Uh, Cause right about here, all the way across, it was warped and it was spitting coolant out of it. So, <clears throat> here I'll show you the one that was on there. The guy tried to fix it. You can see he welded it all up. And when he did this, this actually warped. So, yeah, it's a common problem with the, uh, the 6 and 700s. Uh, white pipe cracks, runs lean, gets hot and overheats. That might have been part of the issue. The other part of the issue might have been all along that the uh, radiator was plugged and that's why it overheated. So I'm just kind of going through everything. Um, I know that spins, I know that's good. It's not leaking any coolant, so I know the mechanical water pump seal's good. So I'm gonna keep searching. Um, I do have a, another radiator I can try. Might give that a shot and see what happens. All right, so I replaced the radiator. I left the cap off, let it burp. The thermostat open up, I got my digital gun here. Reading uh, 70 Fahrenheit here. 126 here. 160. 163, the thermostat's opened up. You can see it's starting to flow through the tank. It's actually sucking out of the poop tank. It is now circulating, it's not overheating. Check that temperature. Thirty 
six, maybe nine. So I'm gonna let that run for a little bit. That radiator looks a lot better. It's actually circulating now. The other one, not so well. There you go. Burrs like a kitten. So that's how you do a head gasket on a 700. It's not leaking. Notice how quiet it is. No exhaust leaks by the white pipe, that's good. I just gotta put this bad boy back together. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it. And like always, until next time.